Hello and welcome. My name is Angela Thompson and I appreciate you joining me. Today I'd like to share a project with you on behalf of tinypandora.com. Let's begin. The first insect we'll make today as part of our wings video will be the bee. Make a full circle like you would if you were going to make a jump ring. Slide it off your tool and snip it straight across. If you do end up with a flat spot, slide it back onto your tool and gently reshape it using a jewelry hammer. This time just go partially around your tool. You don't need a full circle. We're just looking to make an extended C shape. Once you snip it, go ahead and slide it back on your tool and reshape it. And then you're going to do the same thing with your next size tool, which for my purposes ends up being about 3 8 inch diameter. You're going to make another extended C shape. Now that we have all the segments in place, we're going to make the stripes, the cuts for the stripes. So what you want to do is make sure that your wire piece is about the width of your tool. You're going to snip two that size, and then you're going to snip two pieces that are only about a millimeter or two millimeters shorter. And that will give us the four segments that we need for the large circle. And you're going to do the same thing with the middle tool but we're only going to need two pieces for that tool. You don't have to be exact with these cuts. We can trim them once we start putting them into the clay. Next, we're going to cut two pieces about one inch long and then one piece that's about three quarter inch long. The one inch pieces will fold in half to make your legs and the three quarters inch piece will fold in half to make the antennae. Fold all three of those pieces in half using your pliers to um, make a sharp point. 
your pieces might snap together like this piece did. That's okay. Just use a tool to pry them back apart. To make the bees knees, you're going to grab your piece of wire a little bit below the halfway point and just bend it slightly. Do that for both pieces and you've got your bees knees. Now that I've cut all the parts, I'm going to check the placement of my body segments and to make sure that all my cuts are flush. Um, you can align your bee however you want, whatever looks good to you. I'm going to trim mine down because I think that the segments aren't fitting quite the way that I wanted them to. Um, you can continue to make adjustments to this process as we go right up until the point we bake it. To make the wings for the bee, I'm going to cut one piece that's about an inch long and then another piece that's about an inch and a quarter long. To make the wing shape, we're just going to echo the shape that I taught you in video one when we were making our petals for the flowers. It's really simple. Just center and wrap around your tool. You do want to select tools that are size appropriate. So once you put everything together, if your wings don't look like they're um, the right size with your bee, you can use smaller tools and rebend it. All of our bases will need our clay rolled out on our thickest setting, and then you can free form a shape or you can use a cutter, whichever you prefer. Start laying your shapes out on your bee. You don't have to worry about indents into your clay at this point. That's perfectly okay. We will be filling in the entire surface of the clay with either liquid clay or UV resin or pan pastels or whatever we choose to use as a colorant. And those item additions will mask any imperfections that are in the base of your clay. Align your parts until you're starting to make your bee shape. If you don't like something or think it's a little too big, like this particular piece here, you can just snip it and resize it um, with your tool if needed. You can always readjust your shapes as you go. Just keep in mind when you're trimming to trim in very small increments because these are small pieces, a little goes a long way.
These legs look a little bit long, so I'm going to snip them off, and then I'm going to put the bee's knees back into it with another little bend. Now we're going to put the stripes into the body segments. When you're doing this, pay close attention to the way your body is aligned. You do want to match the angle of the stripe to each of the different body segments. You also want to make sure that your spacing between stripes is equal. Um, I would suggest that you just start trying it, and if your piece doesn't fit, Trim it about a millimeter or so at a time, just tiny little snips until you get it right. And keep in mind, you can adjust it as many times as you need it. You're not going to hurt the piece at all. After you've sunk the wires in a little bit, you can trim again if you need to, make any adjustments that you need to. Um, you could follow the outline on how to finish a piece that's in video one. I am going to show you a different way to finish them later on in this video if you'd like to do it that method either way. But from this point, I'm going to show you how to make another type of insect. Next, we're going to do a sideways butterfly. 
So you're going to need three pieces to start off of your wire, one that's about two inches long, one an inch and three quarters, and one an inch and a quarter. Take your two inch long piece and fold it in half. You're going to use this to form the body. Um, use your needle tool or something small at the bottom and then just start shaping the wire using your pliers, your jewelry tools, um, the shanks of your needle tool. I want to bring it in a little bit so there's a point definition um, for the tail and then I'll open it back up and start shaping the body and then I'll show you how to bring it back together to make the head. Once you've shaped your head, you might need to work it with your jewelry pliers a little bit just to make sure that your joints line up, or the cut rather, um, and then below the head a little bit, pinch it together just to give that head a little bit more definition. Make sure your cuts are very flush on this. If they're not, open the piece back up, trim them, and then close it. You do want them pretty flush so it makes a nice close. To make this shape, hold your wire slightly off center with your jewelry tool and then you're going to bend your wire down and then you're going to move your jewelry tool over a little bit and do the same thing but move it back the opposite way. And it's going to make kind of an S shape but when you bend both arms down away from the middle you'll end up with an M shape and you'll use that M shape and round the edges to make this butterfly wing. Repeat the process for the larger wing and make any adjustments that you need to until you are happy with the shape of both your wings and your body. Cut a one inch piece of wire to use to make the antennae. Curl the little end tightly using your jewelry tool and then just kind of bend it until it has a little bit of a curvature to it and it's not perfectly straight and it will make your antennae for the butterfly. 
sheet your clay on your thickest setting and cut out two of your shapes. You can use a cutter or you can freehand. I do suggest using the cutter if you have a form you like because that will make shaping the wire to your piece easier. You can use it as a form. So with that said, what you want to do is cut off a piece of wire that is long enough to go completely around the outside of your shape and then uh, shape it. And once you have your outline how you like it, you can put it onto your base. I love the shape of this heart, but I do want to take a little bit of artistic liberties with it. And I'm going to play with it a little bit here until I find a way that I like, and then I'll change it and put it back down on the form. This will be an outline to our piece, and it just gives a nice rim to your cloisonne work, and it, um, it makes it easier to know what your exterior of the cloisonne itself needs to be so you can fill everything in appropriately. Once you have your shape outlined, check to make sure that your parts fit in it. Sometimes they're um, a little bulkier than what you estimate the overall size of your piece will be. And you don't want it to look completely um, crowded or packed tight unless that's the look you're going for. And then you can make adjustments so um, that your pieces are uniform in a complementary way. You can always pick your pieces up if you need to relocate them. Um, again, don't stress about it leaving marks or indentations in your clay. We're going to completely fill this in and it will never be seen. Once you have your placement um, complete and you're happy with it, use the acrylic block again to your pressure wires down evenly into your clay. We do want to have a little bit of a rim um, that extends past the gold wire. So if that has been um, misshapen or if it's trimmed too close, go ahead and put some more clay there um, just so you have a, a very little and it just needs to be maybe a millimeter or two millimeters. It's just something to use as a grab on point when we're ready to put the backing onto the clay because we'll take the backing and we'll wrap it around to refill um, up to the wire.
Now I want to show you how to make the dragonflies. First you need to decide how big you want your piece because that will determine the length of the wires that you need to cut. Basically the um, length of your clay, you'll need to cut twice that length of a wire to make your dragonfly body. And for your wings, you'll need to cut twice the width to make your dragonfly wings. So take your first piece and bend it in half and then you're going to use the needle tool or um, some, some small little tool to allow a divot to be put into the end and bend the wire around that and then work up the body in segments just pinching on both sides to give a little bit of a shape to the body. And then this goes right into making the head. So take your end pieces and build, uh, bend it away from the body and then we will have those to make the antennae and you just put a little bit of a curvature into them and then you have your body and your antennae all in one piece. Make any um, additional corrections you need and when you're happy with the shape, press it into your clay. Remember when you're working with the wire and you're using uh, pliers or something to pinch it, to try to work from the bottom up and don't touch the very top of the wire, just squeeze it from the sides. You don't want to uh, mar the top of the wire any more than absolutely necessary. When you're happy with the shape and the placement of your body, we're going to move to cutting the wings. Measure completely across the width of your piece and that will be your wingspan. So you'll cut two pieces like that. And then to make the smaller wings, you're going to measure about three quarters of the first piece. So it'll be just a little bit shorter and that'll keep it in proportion. And you'll need two pieces like that. So choose your tools for this section that are size appropriate for your dragonfly. My pieces are three inch in, inch in diameter and a quarter inch in diameter, and those are size appropriate for the shape and the size that I have. You might need a bigger or a smaller piece. Um, just gauge that yourself on whatever sizing looks the best for your piece. Um, once you have it, your tools, you're going to just do the classic wrap around um, like we did with the flowers in video one and we did with the bee swing in this video. Once you have your shapes uh, made, round them and make sure that they match and that they look symmetrical to each other. And then go ahead and place them on your dragonfly. Now cut another couple of pieces of wire about the length of one of your dragonfly wings and you're going to play with making the wing design. Um, you might find it easier to make them individually or you can put uh, both pieces of wire on your tool and bend them at the same time. Whichever way works the best for you. Just bend them back and forth and put some curves in the wire until you find a shape that you like and that you think will look good inside your wing and then line them up inside your wing and they'll be mirror images of each other. That way they're proportionate. And then just do the same thing for your bottom wings.
Next, we're going to do a top view of Butterfly. And this um, is very similar to the process that I taught you how to do making a dual petal for the flowers in video one. The only thing that's really different is that instead of putting it at the halfway point, you're going to do it at about a two third point of the wire. That way you end up with top wings that are a little bit larger than the bottom wings. Build your piece at the point of the 40, 60, or two-thirds bend, and then you're going to make that crease sharp by using your pliers. You're going to pinch it together to give yourself a hard crease. And then you're going to use two different tools, one that's going to be a little larger and then one that'll be slightly smaller than that. And you're going to use those tools to round the edges of your wires around them forming a uh, B shape, the letter B, but one of the um, sections, the top, is going to be weightier than the bottom. So your uh, top section will actually be bigger than the bottom. You're going to do this um, on both uh, wing sides. If you have a wing that wants to um, bend and get a little crease in it, you just reform it around your tool. You want to get a rounded shape to the wire and then bring the wires to the center. Um, and then that will give you your joined uh, half wing section. And then you put the two of those side by side and you have a pair of wings. To make the body, you're going to cut another section of wire that is two to three times the length of your wingspan. Um, always err on the side of caution and make it look a little longer than you think you'll need. Um, that way you've got plenty of wire to play with for the antennae. And it is one single piece that makes the body and the antennae together. So you're just going to fold it in half and then you're going to use your jewelry tool and put a curl into the tips to form the antennae. You can also cut wires and make inserts for your butterfly wings like we did for the dragonfly wings. I'm going to add some UV resin, glitter, and paint to mine at the end, so I'm going to leave them open. So now I'm going to decide what my shape is going to be, and I want it to be um, an off-shaped kind of organic oval. Um, so I'm going to use an ovalish cutter and get a shape going on this. Um, then I'm going to finish reforming it by hand. Once I have the shape that I like, I'll press it into my clay and then I'll choose a cutter that will cut around it and give me a little bit of a rim because I'll need the rim to attach my base to and I'll show you how to do that next. So press in your wires and then cut out the shape or use a cutter that works. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, this is a little big, so I'm just going to trim it freehanded. Um, I'm going to put it onto a tile to make that a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to trim this, adjust the wire because it slid a little bit on me. Uh, make sure that the clay is up against the wire tightly so it holds it in place and doesn't allow it to gap open. I do want to finish this piece with UV glitter, glitter resin and paint, so I'm going to um, bake it. I'm going to trim away a little bit of the excess here because I won't need quite that much of a lip to attach the backing to. But from this point, I'm just going to smooth out the edges so it's just a little easier to work with when it's time, and I'm going to bake it. I'm just going to bake it for 15 minutes, and then once I bake it, I will apply my backing to it.
So my piece is baked and cooled. I'm going to use my blade and pop it off the tile. And then I'm going to um, spread some liquid clay all over the back of it, a very thin layer, and then around the edges um, between the gold wire and the edge. I don't want it on the gold wire and I don't want it on the other side of the gold wire. Then I'm going to attach a second sheet of clay to the back of this one and it'll be raw clay on your thickest setting of your pasta machine and your size will be slightly larger than your current shape. Um, again, I'm just going to use a handy cutter to cut it out and then I'll trim away the excess manually. Um, because the edge is baked, it's pretty firm and that's what I wanted so I could attach and wrap around this clay. So first I'm gonna squeeze it and make sure that I got the, all the air out and then I'm just gonna roll the edge of the clay right up over the baked clay until it's up against the gold wire. I'm just gonna pinch it and flatten it as I go until I've got a, um, it attached all the way around. If my clay gets a little bulky or it builds up because I'm, I'm folding it, I'll just trim that away. It's, it doesn't matter. And then once I have everything in place, I'm going to use a texture sheet to um, neaten it up, level it out, and apply texture all over the back and up around the wrap around raw edges. This will be your final opportunity to make sure that the piece is as finished as you'd like it to be. Um, you're going to go ahead and, and trim away any excess clay, try to get it all the, to be a level area up around and to the gold wire. Make sure that it's all neat and that there's not any clay that you need to remove. It can get thick in spots, just trim that away and um, retexturize it. When you're completely happy with everything, right before you're ready to bake it, you're going to cover the outside of the butterfly, so between the exterior of the butterfly and the outer gold rim wire, you're going to fill that in with liquid clay. Use a liquid clay um, that you're going to accent. You can use just white or you can use a color of liquid clay. Or if you don't want to use liquid clay on this portion and you'd rather fill this area in with UV glitter at the end, you can do that as well. But I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. I'll use a needle tool to pop any air bubbles. You'll see me lift it up and drop it a time or two. That's just tapping it because it does um, jar air bubbles loose from the base underneath the liquid clay and allows it to come up through the surface. Um, and it will also self-level as I put it on the piece. So I'm just gonna work with it and get it all filled in when I have a nice even flush finish with no air bubbles. And again, this is only outside of the butterfly. Um, then I'll go ahead and bake it. I'll bake it at my manufacturer's recommended setting for a full hour as this will be the final bake for the piece. I did intend to show you this piece um, as I painted it. However, I lost that segment of video. I think that my battery died on me and I didn't realize it until it was too late to help. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, show you what I would have shown you with the dragonflies instead. The glitters that I'm using are from tinypandora.com. They are ultra fine glitters and work very well with this technique. I'm going to be mixing the glitters with a couple of drops of deep shine, which is also available at tinypandora.com. You could use another um, type of brush on resin to do this if you wanted to. 
um, whatever you have on hand should work. Um, the, the Deep Shine is just a non-domain resin, and I find that that works good with these type of pieces. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to give it a good wipe with alcohol. Spray it with alcohol and wipe it to remove any finger residue or anything that might be on it. And then I'm going to mix my glitters into my UV resin and use those to paint in the dragonfly body and the wings. Um, I will be curing my design every time I add another color to it. Um, and that will allow me to do some layering effects if I want to do that or to um, blend colors together a little better. You can have a lot of fun mixing the glitters up using layering effects, trying ombres. You can also add accentuating marks or dots or dashes after you've cured the UV resin using a contrasting acrylic paint. There's a lot of different ways you can do it and fun you can have with it. Once you're done with your piece and you're happy with your design, Cover the entire dragonfly and the liquid clay areas up to the gold wire with a doming UV resin. I use Magic Gloss by Lisa Pavalko. You can also get that at tinypandora.com. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate it. Uh, leave any questions or comments you have in the comment section underneath the video and I will get back with you as soon as I can. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to seeing your finished pieces. You can share those with us in the Hop channel on Facebook. Bye for now.